Hey there, my name is Robert. I've got your word for the day today. Thanks for tuning in on this great Friday morning. You know, we love the Bible here at Calvary. We think that everyone should read the Bible, should apply it to their life, should know the stories of the Bible and, and what it teaches us about life. But if we're all being honest for a second, there are places in the Bible that are not exactly G-rated. There are sections of the Bible that they would not make kids animations about. And uh, you know, there's there's all kinds. Maybe you've got some that, that, that you look at and you're like, wow, that's actually in there. Maybe it's some of the graphic war content and, and all that from the Old Testament. Maybe it's the story of the Levite whose concubine got cut up into 12 pieces and sent out to the 12 tribes. Maybe it's just some of the content content from the Song of Solomon and some of the graphic nature of that. All this is in here to teach us something important about life, about God, and how God wants us to live. And there are times where it's not exactly written for kids, but yet people of all ages can learn something important from it. And and I've got a story from the book of Mark to share that may not be quite as graphic in content as some of those that I mentioned, but I don't foresee them making an animated video for kids about this story. See, we find the story in Mark chapter 5. Jesus is sailing with the disciples. He gets to uh, some Gentile territory and he lands there and he's starting to get off the boat. And immediately the story takes our attention to another person, another character in this moment. And this character, we're not told his name right away, but instead we're given descriptions about his situation and what he looks like and what the setting is. And the setting is that there's a cemetery there with a man chained up, not in his right mind, naked and demon possessed. Here's where we can kind of see this is not, you know, for children here. And, and immediately Jesus being Jesus goes and starts an interaction, starts to engage with this man. And we see conversation there is, is the society that this man had once been a part of, once been you know, a, a worker in, maybe even a business owner, a husband, maybe even a father, a, a son in this community now has shunned him and chained him up outside the city in the cemetery to say, hey, we don't know what to do with you because of, of what's going on in your life and what's going on spiritually with you and so you're out here. And, and so Jesus begins to interact with him and immediately the, the demons that were possessing this man start to speak on behalf of the man and interact with Jesus. And I want to pick up in verse 7. And it says this, And crying out with a loud voice, What have you to do with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I, I petition you by God, do not torment me. For he was saying to the man, Come out of the man, you unclean spirit. And Jesus asked him, What is your name? Now this is, this is really significant because he says, My name is a legion, for we are many. Legion, thousands of demons, he's saying, are possessing this man in this moment. And he goes from speaking single person, I and me, to saying, my name is a legion, for we are many. This man is in a very difficult, dangerous, and dark place spiritually because of these demons. Verse 10, it says, And he begged him earnestly to not send him out of the country. Now a great herd of pigs was feeding there on the hillside, and they begged Jesus, saying, Send us into the pigs, let us enter them. So Jesus gave them permission, and the unclean spirits came out and entered the pigs and the herd, numbering about 2,000, rushed down into the steep bank into the sea and drowned. What an insane and crazy chaotic moment is happening here. You got this man who's just completely overwhelmed by the spiritual oppression, the demon possession that is happening in his life. And Jesus comes and, and confronts that and then has the power to send thousands of demons out of this man's life. They go into pigs who run into the hillside, down into the water and kill themselves and die. And the response, you would think the, the, the community would come and go, wow, you, you've saved this man's life. In fact, it says that they found the man clothed in in his right mind, like he's, he's in a healthy place. But instead they come with fear and they immediately start talking about how this Jesus man needs to leave immediately because they realize the power that Jesus had. They'd likely seen all kinds of treatments and, and attempts made to help this man all unsuccessfully and so chaining him up in the cemetery was the best option. And then Jesus comes and changes everything. Now, what's this have to do with us in Lake Havasu City, Arizona, or wherever you find yourself watching this today? Well, 
The power that Jesus demonstrated speaking into this man's life is the same power that's available for you, same power that's available for your friends, your family members, your co-workers that need the life-changing hope of Jesus. If we're not careful, we can start to limit the power of God in people's life and think, man, I know they need Jesus, but they're just, that's never going to happen. I know they need Jesus, but I'd never get them to church. I know they need life change, but they're just so far away from where they need to be. I don't see that happening. If we're not careful, we can start to make some of those comments, some of those thoughts, some of those belief judgment calls. But at the end of the day, Jesus demonstrated with this man here that there is no one outside of the life-changing hope of Jesus. He has power over any internal or external force in someone's life, he has the power to bring about life change. And so maybe you're in a place where you think there's something in your life that, that you just can't overcome. There's a hang up, a hurt, a habit, an addiction, a sin problem that you're like, man, I don't know how I can ever get out of this. Jesus is the answer. Your willpower, your motivation may not be enough, but Jesus' power in your life would be. In the same way, you may look around, you may be a follower of Jesus, you may have seen him change your life, but you may look around and see that there are other people that, man, they need him, but it's just not going to happen. Never give up hope that Jesus can change lives. Never give up hope that Jesus can change and transform and radically come into people's lives and bring about positive change, because that is exactly what Jesus came to do. To, to seek and save those who are lost. Jesus said, those who are fine do not need a physician. It's those who are sick. And so those people that seem so far away from God are the people that need Jesus the most and the people that can most beautifully and visibly demonstrate the power of Jesus. So never give up hope that Jesus can change you or anyone around you. We hope this is a help to you. Hope you tune in next week for your word for the day. We'll see you next time.